Welcome back everyone. Today we're going to be looking at the Ultra Block kits and we've already done the unboxing. I'm going to show all three external write blockers and how you set them up and then how you do the imaging. So we're going to start with one of the easiest and that is the USB write blocker. So we have the USB external write blocker here out of the kit. I already have our blue cable connected to our forensic workstation. And then I have our power cable connected obviously to power. Remove the right blocker from the pack and then we have a connection to our forensic workstation and then the connection for our USB device and then the power connection on the back. So the instructions say you connect the source device first, then connect the bridge to the host computer, your forensic workstation, then connect the power supply to the bridge, then press the power button to begin operation and your workstation should detect the USB device. So we have our suspect data here. This is going to be our source that we want to image. Connect that into the USB port. Now imaging will go as fast as your slowest connection. So if you have a very slow drive or an older USB style, then it will be slower here. You want to make sure that you're connecting in your forensic workstation as USB 3.0 and not using a, like a 2.0 port. Otherwise it will be very slow whenever it's trying to image. Connect the bridge to our forensic workstation. Now we can connect the power. Once everything's connected, we can turn our power on. We already have DC power light. This light indicates power on. We want to be able to see the light detected for host and the device. We have right block connected. Host was detected. We're now getting some power to our, to our target disk. We have our host, we have our device, we have right block, and we saw some activity here. So we have some information about our target device flashing on the display here, but really what you need to check is that host was detected and I actually heard it connect to our forensic workstation. We have the device detected and write block is enabled. So make sure always that that write block is checked. Whenever we are testing our write blockers, um, we would be using a disk that we don't care if we actually have to write to, and then we would uh, uh, test whether we can write to the disk after that. So let's go over to our forensic workstation. In our forensic workstation, let's go ahead and open up FTK Imager. Now we have the evidence tree. We need to add a device. We can go file, add evidence item, and then it is a physical drive. And we can select the physical drive we want, and we detected the Toshiba external USB 3.0 uh, USB device. So that's drive one. So if we select that, we can click finish. And now we have direct access to the physical drive itself. Some people like to analyze the drive directly to see if it's related to their case, but I prefer to do imaging first. It does take a little bit longer, but if our suspect drive happens to go bad while I'm doing my analysis, then I've already lost my image. I'd rather be creating our disk image now. So go to File and go to Create Disk Image. We want to image a physical drive. Select our drive that we want, which is drive one, the Toshiba external 3.0, and then click finish. Now we can do image destinations. Where do we want to save to? And the format that we want to save in, raw DD, smart, E01, or AFF. If you want compression, you really should choose E01 or AFF. I'll choose AFF. Click next. Give it a case number. Give it your evidence number. And then where do we want to save this to? What compression we want. If it's zero, it's no compression. One is the fastest. The imaging will go quite faster. If we have nine, it will be the smallest, but it will take a long time to compress. Let's do about a six and click finish. We could set up our destination. We can say whether we're going to verify the images after they're created. Go ahead and click start. The red LED activity light is flashing because we are reading from the suspect disk. What I want to show you, the view in Windows, I'm in the Disk Management Console, and we can see Disk 1, it's set to Read Only, Windows detected it as Read Only, and then I have an EFI partition, and then I have another partition, and some unallocated space. If any of these partitions were formatted with a file system that Windows could understand, like NTFS, then they would have automatically been mounted by Windows. Now, because they're Read Only, Windows wouldn't be able to write anything to them, but my point here is that whenever you plug in a drive into Windows with an external write blocker, it usually shows up as a normal disk. So Windows will understand it as a normal disk. If it can understand the file system, 
then it will automatically mount any file systems that it understands, and then you could get direct access to that file system. This is an EXT formatted partition, which is basically a Linux file system, so Windows cannot mount it uh, by default. But Windows can see the entire disk and all of the partitioning information, and it can do all the imaging. So again, whenever you're connecting a disk with an external write blocker, the disk will show up as normal. It will just be read only. So if you have auto mounting enabled, it will auto mount it. So just be aware of that. Um, and this is why we want to test our write blockers to make sure that they actually are write blocking because we don't necessarily know what's on the disk whenever we're plugging it into our forensic workstation. If auto mount happens, then uh, we want to make sure that write blocking is working as expected. So that's it for this disk one. USB disks are relatively easy, so let's go ahead and move to another disk type. So next for the suspect disk, we have a SATA laptop hard drive. We have the SATA connections here. So this has been removed from the laptop, so we can actually use the external imager. We have some SATA cables, and this is the cable for power, and then this is the cable for data included in the UltraBlock kit. We also have our SATA slash IDE bridge, and then we also have the quick reference guide as well. So go ahead and remove it from the packaging. Get started, we connect our source drive, connect the bridge to the host computer with our blue cable again, connect the power from our power cable again, and then press the power button. So pretty much all of them are the same. Connect the source device, then connect it to the forensic workstation, then connect it to power. So always use that procedure. Now we have our power and we have our SATA connector here. And then we have our connection to our forensic workstation on the back and we have our power connector there. Okay. So I'm gonna go ahead and connect up the suspect disc first. We connect our power, connect our data. Connect our forensic workstation, then connect our power. Once you have everything set up, again we have our power button. Uh, we have the power indicator that it is getting power, but it's not turned on. We have IDE detected, SATA detected, host detected, that's our forensic workstation, and then write block and activity. So the activity is the red light that's flashing again. We always want to see the write block uh, turned on. And uh, whenever we turn this on, we should see host detected. Okay, so the first thing, right block, the right block LED comes on with power. I can hear the disc starting to spin up. We have host detected and SATA detected, so both of those look good, and then we had some activity. So that's the kind of thing we'd, we would expect to see with the right blocker. Now let's go over to our forensic workstation. If we check our disk management console again, then we can see disk one again is almost one terabyte. It's also set to read only. It was unallocated, which means that it's been cleaned off or whatever. Okay, so we can go now into FTK Imager or whatever imager you're using. Go to File, Create Disk Image. We wanna create a physical drive every time we can. Try to make a physical drive. If we can't make a physical drive, then we'll try it for logical. Click Next, we want to choose Physical Drive 1 again, and it's detected as HDST HTS, and then this is US, and then USB. So we know that that's our disk. Let's go ahead and click Finish. And then we add our imaging information just like before. Let's go ahead and do AFF, the case number, destination, let's say temp, file name, I'll do 002, click Finish. Okay. While that's imaging, I would normally just leave it to image and maybe go do something else. This is why it's nice to have a separate computer from your analysis system. That way you can do your imaging um, and then analyze on another disk. But what I'm going to do now is go to File and Add Evidence Item because I want to actually see if there's anything on that disk. Click fin Next, Physical Drive 1, Finish. So I can see that some data was found and I'm just gonna scroll through this hex editor. It's hard to say whether this is actually structured data. It's hard to say whether this data is structured or not, or whether it's random. It looks like it's fairly random. So maybe a, you know somebody zeroed it. Maybe somebody wrote random data to the disk, so it'd be hard to recover something. Just like the, with the USB stick, whenever we connect a SATA drive through here, we always want to check for write block, and whenever we detect it, on our forensic workstation in Windows or Linux or Mac OS, it's going to show up as a normal drive. And if there's a file system that the operating system can mount, 
again, it'll mount it. We, again, didn't have a operating or a file system on here for Windows to mount. So let's go ahead and look at the final external write blocker. So for our third suspect drive, we have this M2 drive that we're going to try to image. Uh, just like before, we're connecting the source to the TAU, uh, then we're connecting to the forensic workstation, then power, uh, connect the power, and then turn the power on. So let's go ahead and get set up. So we need an adapter, and that has been included here. So that's what the adapter looks like. So that just slides in and clips, okay? And then we have our M2 adapter. Our drive slots in there, and then we can use this pin to uh, hold it in where it needs to go. Okay, so we just slide it in there, hold that down, and then make sure you screw it down at the end. Okay. Your drive shouldn't be able to wiggle around. Now we can just connect directly to our write blocker and it clips. Next we need to connect the forensic workstation. And then we connect the power. We now have everything set up. All we have to do is hit the power button. You can see power in the adapter. DC, power, we have host device, write block activity, just like all the others. So one final thing, I wanted to show the SATA 3 to M2 NGFF connector, and that is this little box here. And basically it looks like a SATA hard drive, but whenever we open it up, inside you have a place where you can connect either M2 or M SATA. I have this M2 card, I'm gonna slip it into there, and then we have a small screw to hold it down. Once you've got the drive in there, then you can close this up to protect it. And then we have just a normal SATA connector so that we can connect it to our SATA bridge like we did before. Once everything's hooked up, just hit the power button. We see right blocks, that's what we expect. See a power indicator on the drive. We have host detected. We have SATA detected. And we saw some activity, so now we have access to that disk. So let's go take a look at our forensic workstation. So on our forensic workstation, we have disk number one detected, and it did have an NTFS partition on E drive, so it's now mounted as E drive. We have a couple other partitions uh, and then some unallocated space here. So if I open up a folder, so we have local disk, and this is partition for E drive, this NTFS partition, 100 gigabytes. And it, right now, if I try to write something, so let's try to move this temp folder in. And whenever we're asked if we wanna copy something in there, we can't because it's write protected. So if you have a disk and Windows uh, detects all the partitions, and then you have a file system installed on one of those partitions, then Windows will automatically mount it if auto mount is enabled. And then whenever you try to write anything to that partition, you won't be able to because it is read only. So it is still detected as read only with the disk. Just like before, if we're using FTK Imager, create disk image, physical drive, next, and then choose drive one. And we see it's an Intel SS USB device, okay? And then we select that, click finish and then just keep imaging like we did all the other ones. We've gone through hooking up the three different types of external hardware write blockers. These are very flexible, obviously, because it, depending on the, the media that you get into your lab, you can just grab the single uh, write blocker that you want to use. They're very easy to hook up and they have a lot of adapters. We did end up using one of the M2 to SATA adapters and it's working as expected. So um, what I really wanted to show you here is first off how flexible these are, how to hook them up, and also that Windows or whatever system you're using will detect the source disk that you're trying to image. It'll detect that source disk just like a regular disk in Windows. The only difference will be that it will be detected as read only. Plug in a test disk with your external write blocker and then try to write data directly to the disk. Now it could be to the partition, 
but trying to write directly to the disk is actually a little bit better for testing because you're skipping the file system level and going directly for the lowest level writes. So these are external hardware write blockers. I like them because they're flexible. And then if you're imaging just a couple disks at a time, it's very nice. And if you're also trying to do a quick analysis and you don't need to image, then they work for that too, because it's just going to show up like a normal disk. You can then import it into most forensic software and then just start your analysis. So that's it for these ultra block kits and some of the adapters. I hope it was interesting. Thank you very much.